Good morning, everybody. Let me introduce you to Victor Vogel, a plastic expert and an expert on all the topics he's going to talk about now. Say a big hello to Victor with his topic, server-side tuning for Juna. Duke has made the great work, right? That's right, that's right. So it, it, after this great keynote, I thought, oh wow, I have the first session and on a Sunday morning it will be hard and the room will be empty. But uh, it's okay, it's okay, good. So, server-side tuning. So as most of you know, I'm working for Plesk. Or not. <laughs> Ta-da! So, and the reason why, I, this is also one of the reasons why I wanted to do this talk, because I, um, I'm not using, I'm not because I'm, I'm working for them. And so years ago, when I was a little bit frustrated by my, my posting company, and I had limited contract, many, limited managed contracts, and it was, it was not that easy to, to improve the, the performance and settings on the server, and, and I, I was looking for something that where I have more more freedom, where I could tune, tune more the settings. And then I I was not uh, and I'm not a server administrator, so I I looked for something in between, so I have more control, but uh, did not have all the responsibility of a complete root dedicated server. So um, it's not that easy to maintain a server to keep it secure. So and then I was looking for control panels like others, like Plesk or others. So then I stuck to Plesk and I fell in love. And so, and that was many years before, before I even started thinking about working for Plesk. And then I got the great opportunity to work for Plesk. And, and I really also like the topic and I always try to improve and to try out things on my server. And I broke the server a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting. And so I, I took the possibility, the chance to work for them. and. Now we're getting even more and more into all the things and learn a lot of things, and it's quite interesting. So this is my background, and today we will, of course, speak only of Joomla about the Joomla about server settings that that you can do or server yeah, changes that you can do to improve your current state of your Joomla instances or installations. So in general, so the requirements of of Joomla are not really that high. So you know we are still with the three point X version. We are we are still let's say, we are still at the minimum requirement of five point three, even uh, though this version is really outdated and shouldn't be used anymore at all. So we recommend of course five six or seven. I wouldn't recommend five six at all, but we still have the breakfast comp compatibility and we have to we have to be compatible with five three till the end of the major release. So five uh, Joomla 3.x will be all, will always be uh, runnable or usable on 5.3, but we want to increase the PHP version the requirements in the next in the Joomla 4 version. So as you see, my spell is most of the uh, used uh, P uh, database, um, and they are they're also not that high in the patch server. Um, Nginx and um, Nginx and Apache is supported. Um, in, in, in my in, in my description of the talk, I also mentioned operation system, but I, I will skip this part because uh, um, whether you, you you are using Ubuntu, Ubuntu or CentOS, uh, it doesn't make a lot of difference in the end because um, try to use the latest version, so 16 or, or CentOS 7, but um, it's. At the end, uh, you can make the same uh, same uh, settings on same optimizations on both systems, or also other systems. There are many different other systems, but I, I have several problems with each of them, and they are running quite 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 well, and never has a problem. Uh, but of course, the command lines. If you if you go to SSH and uh, do some command lines, they are different. But in the end, you can achieve the same. The same. So, but when it comes to my configuration, what I like to do is to use uh, use a uh, uh, a setting with Apache and Nginx. So I use Apache to process all the normal requests. So I can use also the HD access to set my rules to improve, set cache control settings. Um, and I will show you something how to do it a bit later. And Nginx, uh, 
Bios and Genix for, for as a proxy, so I can just respond to the static files are, are responded by Nginx directly to the to the browser. So and yeah, that's pretty well. That's pretty fast. So Nginx can uh, uh, is pretty perform very very fast. So you can you can the uh, uh, Nginx handles such requests very fast, and the rest is done with Apache. So this is a good combination if you have the possibility to change it on your system. But this is what I would prefer. What I think what I'm doing. So PHP. So it was released in 2015 already, and PHP 7.8. We have 7.7.1.5 as the current version is fully supported by since 3.5. And it's significantly faster than PHP 5.x. I will show you a small um, screen, small uh, uh, debug output where you can see how fast it is. And it requires far less memory. So it's great that you have a lot of concurrent users. You can, your server can still handle this request by the PHP interface. So mm -hmm. it makes absolute sense to, to, to switch to PHP 7. So if you can do it, do it. You shouldn't use a website that is still running for 5.8 something. And if you, there's, in my opinion, there's no reason to not update the PHP version, uh, because if you have still legacy or whatever, so you should try to, to update the extensions or, or, the, or your core to get to get uh, the compatibility to, P, to PHP 7 and not to search for other extensions. So if you have extensions that, that are not running with PHP 7, uh, then you should look for other extensions because the developer is not really active uh, developing anymore. So. Yes, and what I'm suggesting is if you if you run on the production production as a production website, uh, disable uh, errors and logging of errors because it makes it way faster. But of course, do the same setting and staging on a subdomain and, and enable everything and look whether you have errors, warnings, notices, and try to fix them. And then move, of course, the fixed fixed versions move back to the production. So it's important to. Uh, to test, of course, uh, to look whether there are errors. But if you are running a production, you try to uh, remove it or disable it, so it runs really f way faster. And also, PHP as a patch module, never use it because you will have some permission write problems, and then you would have to set to set seven 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 because there there is not the, the correct user. So run as a uh, as a fast CGI or FPM. So that's also very important, and it's also f fast and more so, definitely more secure. And yeah, that's pretty all about PHP. And 7.2 is planned for the end of, of this year. So we are pretty fast in the 7.8 branch. So you sh should switch definitely. So there's no way to not switch this feature. So this is an example of when PHP 7 came out. This is a, a, a screenshot from PHP 7. So 7.1 is even better, even more. So that was, a, that was a normal vanilla installation of Joomla. And I just... Uh, Enabled uh, the debugging. Okay, thank you, Frankie. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so it was uh, with, with demo demo content, and this is what you see. I think everybody saw already uh, the demo output. Well, you should. Well, you should at least. <laughs> so it would be smart. So you see all the the time that we did, that was need, needed to to send the response, to process the uh, request, then use memory. Then you see all the triggers that was triggered um, in the system. So we. Have this, those are the system triggers after load and after uh, in, initialize or after route after this page. There are some other triggers that were triggered by other, like from other components. And then there are the render, and that's just where you put the, you send the output back to the browser. And you see the memory usage and also the time that was, was needed to. And the red ones are not that good. Maybe you should take a look what what the problem is. So in such cases, in cases if you really have a performance problem, this is a side note, uh, you should look what what trigger needed the most time and the most memory, and then uh, open the debugger and debug this this specific trigger, and then you will see maybe there's a plugin that that really make a big for each uh, loop whatever. So then you can improve on that. And here, and you can see this simple simple side needs uh, six or seven milliseconds, I think. And 8.5 8 megabytes. So it's not, it's really low. So because there were no content on it, it's just a standard Zoom message. That's what that was uh, that was with, uh, was done with 5.6. And 
this is the same the same website with seven seven point eight when seven came out, yeah. and you see uh, it just took uh, thirty eight I think thirty eight me uh, thirty milliseconds and just two megabyte. So you see uh, it was fast, uh, double the time uh, double faster double fa uh, what is it? Faster, faster, double yeah. faster, and just needed uh, the fourth of the memory. It was just a vanilla. So if you think about, you have a, a big installation with an e-commerce, it will it will increase it in, in, in significantly. So it's, it's, there's no way to not doing it. So go and, and switch to each side. And you also see that you have far less red red items. So caching in Joomla, what do we have? So as you know, we have the system cache. Now I will uh, concentrate on the Joomla part, not on server-side caching. So we have a system cache, as you know, in the global settings. Uh, we have the conservative and progressive caching. So uh, they cache parts of the, of, the, of the website, but not the complete output. So you can cache uh, quer database queries uh, of components, menu, a module render of views in the progressive caching. And we have several supported handlers. So the usual, the default one is a fire one, but we also support memcached, uh, Redis. We also have different mm -hmm. ones. APC. What? APC. APC too. Yes, yes. There are some X cache and, and so on. So if you serve, it's it's uh, if the modules or the the, the tools are softwares are installed on the server, you will see it in the selection box. And uh, we have also the page case plugin. So this is uh, even a stronger uh, cache mechanism because the, co the whole, the complete output is cached as a static file, and then uh, um, on, on on further request, uh, it's, uh, it will it, it send it's it is sent out to to the to the browser directly. So you, you have a lot of um, you, you save a lot of database database queries on a lot of processes. Uh, in, in, Miles, in would that be would that then be served by Nginx? Sorry? Would that be served by Nginx? No, no, because you still have to go through the Joomla, oh. Joomla question. But there's a possibility, I, 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 the key, I think, I saw it on, for another open source system, the big one. Uh, so uh, the, if you have the URL, dot article, dot blah, 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 and they save the static file directly in this, in this ordering so cache, and that's slash article, slash blah, blah, blah. And then you can write HTAccess rules or Nginx rules so that you redirect directly on this specific package folder. Yeah. And then it, it is, uh, it is uh, responded by, uh, served by, by Nginx, by the server. And then it's even, even faster than this. So this is an improvement, but it's not the best solution that you can get. But it's still a good solution. Better than not using it at all. Uh, but uh, I have also a tip. This is my own plugin. So a little bit. So now what, what I'm doing is a little bit. It's the same what page uh, page cache plugin of the, the core does. But I, I have an extra feature that uh, when I when I create a static file, I already I also create a, a zip file, JZIP file, and I save it to uh, as a cache as a static file. So on, the, on further request, I do not have uh, to to the consumption or the calculation for of for algorithm for the compression. I just can send uh, respond with a compressed file. So you save a little bit of some milliseconds of uh, calculation time. Okay, let's see some examples. I prepared some examples. Uh, don't worry, you will see a uh, detailed view now. It's just uh, that you see I, I installed again a Joomla website uh, with a demo content. And this is uh, the, what I get if I do a request. This is the uh, browser console. And you see we have 200 status codes. That's okay, the, the, the files are there, they are sent back. Um, that's all get request, and then you see how much request you had, and how much I will show it in a, in a second view. So this is this is a, this is a call without caching. So it's just a normal installation. What what is done? So you see every every static file uh, uh, creates a, a separate HTTP request. So it, it needs time to, to to do all the requests, and um, we have only 40 requests, so it's very low. For, for a website, and uh, still uh, there are over 800 kilobytes and over 2.8 seconds, so it's quite a lot. So, and then I try to, to the next the next test was to activate uh, pa the page cache uh, cache uh, plugin. 
This is the same. You see, uh, now you have the uh, uh, change here. You see 304. So th this is uh, the page cache plugin uses the browser cache mechanism. So it says if you have if, if the static file is stored already in your storage in local storage, use the file. So you don't have to download it again. But of course, you have the normal request, uh, the action mail request. And what you get is, okay, we have the same amount of files, of course. But you see, uh, the time, uh, what did I do? Yeah, 500 kilobytes, but uh, what is it? Sorry. Yeah, but I solved only in the HTML request, but because the files, I, I, didn't, I did not change the files. So the static files are, had the same size. And it's way faster. So see, you have only 68 milliseconds that was needed to respond response to the first request. And here I have only almost 1.7 one, one seconds. So because the, it, was, it was already pre-catched, and um, Joomla had just to send the, the static file back. It was way faster, as you see. On a so we have already uh, half the time, so we just need 1.2 seconds. And then um, in the session that I had uh, two, uh, two days ago, I said, okay, you can also minify or concatenate files, and there's a plugin, uh, JCH uh, Optimize. And I did a test with, uh, with a page fresh plugin, but also with, uh, with the options activated with, uh, with the optimization plugin. And then you see a big difference. So we have only, only one one CSS file to load, just one request, and we only have, have one JS file to load. So we have the same output, nothing changed, but we, 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 we concatenated all files, all different files in one single file. So it, can you see how fast this is? So we had, because it was also JZIP, because I activated also JZIP, so it was compressed too, it was minified, all white spaces were removed, and you see we have only four requests, so the same output, nothing changed, changed, everything is the same. We have only four requests to do, only 370 kilobytes and only 0 0.7 seconds. So this is a big improvement and this is just a small, small, very small and simple side. So if you have a big start, it will be even more, so you will see it will be exponential. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's you have to pay attention because if you minify like this very hard or ultra, you can have a lot of errors. I think we testing, 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 testing <laughs> and uh, open the console and look whether you have JS uh, errors or whatever. Question. And no, it just it, it chip. Ah. Um, when you got your site running and everything is perfect, retest again after one month. Yeah, or we'll just delete. Just delete the cache and try again. Is the cache? Yeah, no, no, but really, uh, after one month or something, you, you installed something new, maybe yeah. something changed, you just... Yeah, right. Yeah. Always test, but it's, it's normal, you should do it with two sites anyway, so... Maybe write some system tests, like we heard yesterday with the Selenium yeah. test. It makes sense to automate this process, if yeah. it depends how big your sites are. I don't want to advertise, but uh, regular labs has a task cleaner which can automatically erase your dash after each save or each apply. Okay, but, but not yeah. Not the browser, I guess, local files. Not the browser, yeah. No, no, but uh, it's, it's okay that you, you can put that because I have the same ex extension in my portfolio. Um, after a, a specific trigger, if you save an article, the cache will be cleared, complete yeah. cache. So this is possible. All you have in the backend, you have a small uh, button where you can just click cache or uh, click cache, cache clear. So what do you do with uh, the page cache uh, on a very dynamic site? With yeah, this is random banner. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, this is a problem. So you have to look w uh, whether you can limit it. Uh, but if the functionality is not there anymore, then you you cannot use such such kind of cache. cache. Then you can use, for instance, the uh, JCH cache uh, optimized uh, to concatenate and whatever, but not do not cache. So reload them on each load. Uh, and you can use still the, the global caching so to, to cache specific mod modules, for instance. Okay. Yeah. So you can still improve it, but you cannot cache the complete output. So if you have such a thing, uh, maybe you try to avoid it or maybe to limit, limit the time, the caching time. Good. Good. Question? <laughs> well, when it comes to, to GCH optimize and combining multiple files into one, yeah. um, what are your thoughts on HTTP2? Because I, I read 
um, some controversial blog posts, one saying that if you're using HTTP2, mm -hmm. stop combining files because the server will take care of this. I know. Uh, I will send them as one, uh, and uh, you stop breaking stuff if you don't combine things. Yes, yes, that's, that's a big advantage of HTTP2. So you have you have a multiplexing, you have binary uh, channel. So it uh, makes sense because you don't have the limitations that, that you have with HTTP 1.1 or 1.0. If you have a lot of files, you have for every file one one request, one channel, one channel open. If you use HTTP 2, you you can use the same channel multiplex in parallel. So it makes sense if you if you have a very complex website, uh, so so not to break things or not to have to test a lot. You can you can stop uh, uh, concatenating them, uh, but still you, you will get a very fast uh, response. So it's 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 I I I I'm not sure we have you have to check and see in, in detail. And I, I, um, I I tried to to check this, mm -hmm. and I could not really favor the one or the other. It seems also be yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. dependent on uh, with what devices you are testing it actually. It's also important. What yes, so, yeah. so yeah, absolutely. But unfortunately, if you don't do this. You will get a, a low score on Facebook just by Google. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 but, but, but okay, that, that's, that's the problem by, uh, of the client. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> not, that, not your problem. Exactly, that, that, that's the thing when it comes to communicating stuff to the client, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to communicate it a different way, but, but as he said, there's not a big difference anymore. Yeah. But still, but maybe if, if you can get this uh, the same without an error, or, or even with HTTP2, I would still prefer this, this solution. But you have, of course, you have the time on the CPU to create or can coordinate the files. But it's paid, it's cached anyway, so you have to do it maybe once, uh, one week or one day, it depends on what your settings are. So there's also, yeah, you, have to, you have to find a balance here. Yeah. Can I ask you the, I've just been playing with your plug. Um, so uh, the uh, system pays cache. Yeah, yeah. You've got the use browse, ca browse cache, you can. Yeah. What's the t how do you set the, the like time limits on the browser cache? You can set uh, you can set it via edge access via cache control. Oh, okay. Uh, but but we will come to it la later. There's oh. there's there's a say. But we, uh, with the with this setting, you just send in the header that you you want the browser to use his local cache. Yeah. So this is just a setting for the header. Yeah. And the cache control you can control uh, you can uh, set in the edge access for instance. There's a special, a special module, mod, a patch module for it, and then you can define uh, for one week, for two weeks, which type. But we will come to it later. later. Good. So this is um, also a testing that I did with Memcached. So I, I created, a, I installed Memcached, the PHP Memcache, uh, and then I associated, and then I selected the handle uh, Memcache. But this was another test. It was the test I tested it earlier, so it was not specific with the demo site. It was a big site. Uh, it was a different site. And this is what you see. This is one uh, 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 a stress test with Blitz IO is the service. And you see, this is the this is the response time, and this is the amount of concurrent user per second. So so over time, uh, the concurrent users are getting more and more. So so they they grow. grow. And then you can check whether your, your, your server is still responding. So how many concurrent users per second can you, can you handle, can your server handle? And this is important for, for instance uh, if you have a DDoS attack to see whether your, your, your server can still respond. So um, if you are not using caching at all, so it was, a small, it was a small server with I think one gigabyte and 500 megabyte RAM, so really small one, there is single one CPU. And you see, if you don't use any caching, server-side caching, you will see that this one, this line, will grow exponentially here. So after five or ten seconds, uh, with uh, twenty or fifty or many concurrent users, your server won't be able to 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 answer anymore. So because every every request will trigger the PHP interface and, and everything, so it will take a time, and the the CPU cannot handle it anymore. But if you're using something like memcached or varnish, so you will see that that, that Look here, here the server crashed somehow, and it were almost okay. You can see it really 400 concurrent users. So it, I had 400 concurrent users on the on the server per second, and then the server just crashed. So it was still be, uh, possible to handle the request. Okay, it gets a bit lower, a little bit lower, but still one second to respond, and then it crashed. So my opinion is that you have a normal website, not so many concurrent users. You are not uh, Amazon or whatever. So you, 
it's, you don't really need uh, server-side caching. You can use it if, if, if it's available, if you're hosting company or if you really want to use it, it's, it's okay to use it. But still, it's, you, it's okay if you use uh, the cache, uh, page cache plugin in the file, on the file system. It's more than enough for normal usage for the normal user. Of course, uh, this is very good if you be expecting a DDoS attack or you're selling a lot of things, you have an action, you have an uh, scout uh, week, whatever. Promotion. Promotion week, yeah, something like this. So then it makes sense to activate something like this. But in general, for the normal websites, you don't really need. Because uh, it's not that easy, if you, for instance, if you use Varnish, it's not that easy to configure it properly, so that every request will be handled properly, not cached, so you have to not many dynamic stuff, many dynamic things. Um, so you have to see, but so the, it's, the effort is very high to get, to, get the, to really use, need it, to have it. Uh, but it helps, of course. What you can use uh, to to to, uh, to mitigate data attacks or a lot of requests to use a proxy server like Cloudflare. This will also help you. So you don't have running on your server, but you you move the traffic through an external pro proxy server if you want it. But it's not uh, must. And the requirements is uh, you can find it in Google. <laughs> what you need. So web, uh, now the net, uh, network protocol HTTP2. So, and it's a, it's a client-server model, so as you know, so you have a browser, a client browser, a server, and you send a request to the, to the server, a HTTP request, so get, we have several methods, get, post, head, put, and so on, delete, and so on, and then the server, uh, the, the server handles the request, processes the request, and then sends the response back. So, and uh, in each request you have, um, it depends what you are using, uh, UDP or TCP transport uh, connection protocol. You have a handshake, so this takes all time. So, uh, so that's the reason why HTTP 1.1 was not that fast. It was not multiplex, and you had for all requests you had, you had a sim one one over channel for all files that you had to be loaded. And um, so we have multiplexing now. So they are combining in one single connection. So well, uh, I will show graphic after uh, after this slide how it works. So it's quite simple. To understand, then we use pipe. Uh, HTTP two uses pipelining, um, so that pushes a lot of requests and uh, not waiting for the response. Okay, uh, I got it. I got. I, I don't got it. I didn't receive it. And also, um, also the uh, go to, uh, uh, pro is uh, that it pushes uh, response uh, uh, proactively. So if you are requesting HTML file and the next uh, files that will be requested are CSS or the JavaScript files, the server already knows that the other re request will be the CSS file or JS file. So it already sends the file directly to, to the client. So it, it helps to speed it up. And that are the most important changes and um, so so you have to, you, you need support for from both sides. So one on the browser side and of course the server side. Uh, then you can activate it and use it. And uh, the browsers, old modern browsers, I have a graphic too, uh, are always already supporting it, or even the mobile ones. So it's quite easy. And uh, it's also not difficult to activate it on the server side. So it's just a small config configuration and you have to drive the latest or new, new, newer versions of Apache of the web server. So I think uh, with Apache it started 2.4, I think 17. Yeah, 17. And one more thing is um, they decided to not, uh, to not force encryption, but browsers uh, had the freedom to, to to use, uh, to, to force the subscription. So that's the reason. So the protocol itself do not require subscription uh, encryption or SSL or TLS, uh, but all browsers are forcing to use uh, encryption. So if you want to use HTTP2, you still have to go over HTTPS. So uh, it's, not over, it's not possible to use unencrypted, but uh, the protocol itself is it, not limited to just encrypted channel. And this is a, just a small example that I found uh, how multiplexing is working with your request. So it's not, not always a comp browser, it can also be machine to machine, so server. The protocol can be used for this. And if you have several requests, so each request will, uh, each file will uh, produce, produce a request. So in multiplexing uh, works like this, so 
you collect it and you just use one channel to to uh, to share the files or to send the files. So you don't have the TCP handshake. It takes a lot uh, less time. So you have to uh, uh, negotiation uh, uh, whether you are you are the right, the right person for the authentication, uh, and you can do it just once and use the same channel for, for a lot of many files. So this is what what he meant. Maybe you don't need to concatenate concatenate anymore because it goes to one channel anyway. So if you concatenate, you have a bigger uh, data with bigger size, but one file. But it doesn't matter whether you have a lot of files, smaller files. In the end, you have the same amount of data to transfer. And especially, that's the, the thing that that makes that made me rethink my approach. Um, if you have a general website which loads different assets on different sub sites, uh, and you concatenate all those, you end up with a new set of files transferred on each and every request, and that can't be cached. If you're using HTTP2 and have individual files, those that you already have are cached and don't get loaded, yeah. and the browser only fetches those that need to be requested. Yeah, this is smart. This is good. Uh, a question. Yeah. Uh, it is the same amount of data, but if you are transferring them at the same time, a lot of smaller files, you will transfer it faster than one big file, right? Well, it's faster, yeah. actually, because when you check it, you will need to send headers already with... No, no, uh, in HTTP2. Uh, yeah, actually, if you, yeah, 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 you can check, but because we have one stream to send your data to a browser. And that is faster than uh, transferring one big file, right? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, because you don't need to handshake uh, the, the, the headers, actually, you send it already. Yeah. So, so basically, you don't need to use. But, but I think I, I got your point. So maybe that the files are sent parallel. Yeah. So that that it proves it a little. Yeah. It should be. Faster. I, I think it's even faster. Yeah. You're right. So maybe you're right. So we have to rethink it. Do not concatenate. Yeah. Use it, but use HTTP two. The problem is yeah. if you have a browser that does not support yeah. HTTP two, then you will get to the problem that it will take very long because you, you will fall back on the HTTP one one version, and it will take longer. So. And then this will suck. This will suck. Yeah, so, so basically, you have to all know your audience very good, like right. like Harry right. said in his right. Uh, right. mobile device talk. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, we'll see how it will go. But you see, it, it's already there. So I'll, in, in the next slide, you see it. That, that, so. that fits in with what the keynote speaker said the other day about we always think that browsers are as fast. Yeah, I've got the latest Samsung, blah blah blah. But actually, most of the world has it. So they're actually on the Alga protocol. We're making our sites faster in the West. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everybody right. else is going to be slower. Right, right. So you maybe, maybe, more. yeah, maybe we have to find a balance. So, yeah. but that's a problem. I don't know. What is there a possibility to make a switch if the browser does not support? Because in the request, in, in the request, you can send whether you are supporting HTTP. If, uh, if the browser does support HTTP. The yeah, that's right. That's right. But the problem is, <coughs> could you then use uh, the, the concatenated version? Uh, yeah, that uh, would be smart. You can uh, you can uh, see it in the request header. Yes, sure. Which, which, which yeah, yeah. But but then we we need we, we would need a lo logic that decides. Okay, I send all files uh, normally, not concatenated. Or something, or something for your plugin. This is a great. <laughs> 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 this is a great idea. That's a good point. Yeah, just that you said. So, very good. And you see, uh, so the normal browsers that we are using are already supporting it since long, long ago. So Chrome since 2.29 already, and we are. I don't really, know where. Internet Explorer 8 supports I, it. I think it supports. Wow. It. I, will, I, I yeah, don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe. I think, I don't <laughs> I, but I didn't. I didn't create the graphics. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can ask them, the guys. <laughs> but still, you see all the browsers the, that that are really common. It's IE 11. Yeah. 11? Are you 11? Starting from 11, yeah. Okay, so I don't know why 8 is on this list, so we can remove it. Looks nice, huh? Look nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the HTTP 2. Yes, the support of the browsers. Yeah, right, right. And what's the difference between green and blue? Uh, this is what we're trying to find out. I think. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, I, he said 11, uh, starting with 11, so I think 8 is some uh, com uh, a custom modification, whatever file. I don't know. So, but uh, if you're on this in this line or higher, I think you should be okay. 
And you see that the slide is already a little bit older. So we have, I think, Firefox already 53 or 4. Yes. So, so you're, yeah. I think you can switch to HTTP2. Let's go. This is uh, an example of how you can test it. So if you open the browser console, you will see in the headers, you, you, of course, in the response and in the request headers, you will have a lot of more information. What, what language I accept, uh, whether I support uh, compression, and so on. But this is uh, the overview. So I, you see, I, I did uh, the method get. This is my, uh, my uh, address. So if you're requesting, you're using uh, domain names. But um, so internally, so um, we have we have name servers, so and they're translated to IP addresses. So if you type a name, uh, if the, the the computer, the protocol uses IP addresses and points to the to the source remote address to the, to the server. And then you see the status code is 200, and this is the important thing: version that that was used is uh, HTTP 2.0, and there's a tool that you can use. <coughs> It's tools.keycdn.com, HTTP2 minus test. <coughs> and then you can just enter your website and click on test. And then you will see whether you're supporting. So you can do the same, uh, of course, if you just open the console and see what, what method what use, was used. If you're not so familiar, you can just use the test, uh, enter your URL, and you will see, yeah, it's supported or not, whatever. So, And it's, of course, great if you have here, not red, but, uh, but a blue banner. So should go for it. So compression. And so if you have a request, so the browser sends uh, the acceptance of uh, compression methods, algorithms. Uh, so most of the time it's JSIP and deflate. So they are supported. And and server can check, OK, um, if the browser supports it, I can, I can compress the output, the, uh, the, the HTML content. And send it compressed back, so it will it will decrease the lat lat latency between the two machines. So it it will be way faster to to transfer that the data between machines. But of course you you have the CPU, so you have you have to compress on the run one side. On the other side you have to de decompress. So this is what you keep have to, uh, to keep in mind. So if you're using compression, don't put JSIP on the highest level because the, what you can get out of the highest level. Is that it, it does not work with uh, the, the CPU time that you will need to compress it even further. So if you need a, a setting with the middle, like six for JSON, uh, it will be more than enough uh, if you compare the, the size that you get and the, the time that you will need to get the size. So and this is also quite uh, easy because all modern browsers are supporting it, and server I I never encountered or I don't know whether I ever encountered it. Not compressed? Yeah, you encounter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, maybe there are some specific special servers that are, I don't know, badly configured. Compressed servers for Windows. Oh, okay, yeah, Windows. Where do you expect the uh, easy compression parameters of the server? You said you have to set the easy compression. Ah, uh, this is this is a setting in in the for the for the in in, in the configuration files. I can show it. I can show in it. The configuration yeah, it's a, the, the, it, of uh, whether you are using a web server, uh, Nginx or Apache. So okay. it's a dire directive. It's a directive. You can set it, and you can set a uh, gzip level six or gzip level nine, and it and then the server knows. Okay, I have to use level nine to compress. So it's it's a setting, or you can use even HTX, I think, if possible. Mm -hmm. If you if you if if it's if you're allowed to to change it on your uh, in your contract, but if you are hosting something. And what about the GZIP uh, compression uh, configuration parameter in Joomla? I will show you. Uh, oh, what do you oh, well, do you have a specific question? No, there, there is still one in Joomla. I will show, yes, yeah, I will expl explain it. I will explain okay. it. Yeah. So, and this is how it works. So, in, in the end, yeah, it compresses <laughs> it, sends it to the, to the client, the client decompresses it, and, and it's shows you the content and so on. So what do we have? So if you're using uh, Apache, so you can use mode deflate or mode JSON. On Nginx, you have this module. So it's it's quite easy to install, to activate it. If you have root access, just install over the installers and activate it, and they're automatically running. So they, they, they don't make a lot of trouble. It's very easy to implement them. So 
I don't think that I have to explain more. So this is, I think, what you meant. So by default, if you do not activate this, this is a global settings, and if you go to the server tab, you will see this option, JDZ uh, patch, comp patch compression. And this is only, if you activate this option, um, only the HTML output will be compressed, but not all the other files. So this is only for the, for the what, what goes through the, uh, through, through the Joomla process. So only the HTML, the first response will be JZIP, will be compressed, but the others not. But you, of course you can, you can, you can tune it uh, by using HG access rules or dis uh, restricted. JC optimized can do that also. Yeah, sure, 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 sure but e easier way. I, I, I didn't easier want to uh, make too much. <laughs> yes, but the thing is, it's, 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 easier. it's easier. It's, it's easier. easier. It's easier. Even, even for me, though, I could do the yeah. HG access rules. It's, I know. It's, it's cheaper with testing than to Absolutely. outsource it. So I will show you uh, another possibility, like you do it with the HG access. But of course, like you said, it's very easy to activate also for other for the files, uh, the compression with JCH optimize with the plugin. So it, it has just an option. Up, uh, you want to gzip them, yes, and then everything will be compressed. And Joomla just compresses the the, uh, the initial uh, request, just the HTML report. But you can of course fine tune it uh, in the HTAXS like we will do it now. This is an example. What's it? <coughs> Yes. Do Back? Yeah, right. Yeah. Do that setting in Joomla is in conflict with server side compression? Uh, once again, sir. I mean, this uh, setting, GC page compression yeah. in Joomla, is it in conflict with uh, server side compression? Yeah, it depends. I, I think if you. Have you seen double compression? Yes. Problem? It can happen. It can happen. Yeah. <laughs> it can happen. I, I have done some testing, and uh, when, uh, when you have a server compression, then. This does not help at all. Yeah, because uh, like you said, it, it, had hap it can happen that you double compress, and this is not what you want. Yeah. So you no, have to I check. That's why I was asking the question, because I'm yes. not using this option, and I don't understand. Because now most of the server have this option, when this can happen. Yeah, but if you have your own control, you still have to activate it manually, so like uh, through the edge access. But if you don't have the possibilities to, to change something, uh, for instance, if you have limited hosting contract, you can still uh, at least uh, compress the HTML output. But uh, he's right. So if you're using this, you have to be careful that you are not compressing uh, over HTML again, so recompress it. So you get content and polygamous. Yeah, 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 of course. Then you get five, five or eight errors, whatever. For, so double compression could not be done or whatever. So request could not. And this is what you can do on the server side. So this is an example for HTX, uh, for Apache uh, server. So you you ask first whether this module is activated. If yes, then it's just the same. Uh, you say using the algorithm deflate. Uh, what kind of what what type of uh, of file? So we have text plain, text HTML. You can CSS, XML. So you have to, to decide which which uh, types you want to compress, and then the, the server automatically compresses. It. So you can do you can do the same for, uh, for Nginx. Uh, you have a question, friend. Um, try to compress fonts. They compress really well. Really? Okay. Yes. Good. Good point. I don't have them on the list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you can compress fonts too, but only the local that you are including locally from local yeah. machine. Obviously. Yes, o obviously. Yeah. All all <laughs> also, 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 I would uh, advise to to have your fonts locally, not use not Google using fonts. A external request. It's always yes. a risk that you need, and if the server is not available, or they are slow, or slow, and it's yeah, it limits also the time scale. Good point. So coming to SSL here, this. And uh, TLS is the transport layer security protocol and uh, SSL sec uh, secure sockets layer. And they are, they are uh, security cryptographic protocols to, to, to um, activate an end to end uh, connection, an encrypted connection. So it's, nowadays it's getting more and more important to, to, to save, to protect the data that is transformed against attacks like, like man in the middle or whatever. So especially if you have a form or if you have an e-commerce uh, shop, online shop, you have to, you should and then you have to, you must uh, save or uh, secure the data of, of your customers. And what it, what, it, what it provides is it's a secure channel and 
key logs here for products that are encrypted connection, so that encryption is important here. Then you have authentication via keys, so you have a key, a key pair, and you have a public private key. And this is um, if you have a, you know the green the green lock in the address bar. This is also you have you need a um, <coughs> So, uh, certificate of authority, and this is what they two actually do. They, they, they check whether your cert certificate is, is valid and has the, is not was not stolen or whatever. So it's the same what you are doing with the pair, uh, whatever, and so pair key uh, check, and ensures that integrity. So it also checks whether the data is uh, really from the source and um, and it, uh, whether it's uh, they are using message codes in M MSC. And uh, well, you can ensure that the, the, the data is uh, correct, so it, it was mod modified or manipulated on the way to, to the to the, to the, to the machine. So and there's the possibility to create free SSL certificates. So in the past they were really expensive, uh, more or less expensive. But then we have we had the movement also supported by Mozilla and all big players, and you can easily install free SSL certificate. The negative or main main uh, pain point is that they are only valid for three months. So you don't you don't get sorry? it's not really negative because, because you accept Yeah 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 you can you can yeah, yeah you can renew every time. Yeah right right but it's also in, in, maybe it's even better for security because you have to revalidate that's good. But we have it's a script for it. Sorry? We have a script we, we have a script of yeah, yeah plus have a script for it so it renews automatically. So this that's very good to use uh, if you're using Plex to use a script, it will renew all the, the certificates automatically for you. Uh, if not, you have to do it, uh, or you will write a script to do it. So, But it's pretty nice, and it works really good, and I use it in all my projects, and I don't have to pay any SSL for SSL certificates. Yeah, but, but I heard that it's not supported uh, on all mobile files. I don't know yeah, yeah, I don't know whether it still has um, the problem. So that's encrypted, it's um, not the whole SSL certification, it's, 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 it's some sort of easy, easy part of the whole uh, cryptographic protocol. So when you when you are, I don't know, Google, Amazon or something, you don't use less encrypt because it's encrypted only the, the basic authorization, yes. not, not the whole part. Mm. So basically, you're, when you are trying to sell something on the internet, just use less encrypt. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, that, that, that will work. And of course, if you if you if you configure it, uh, you shouldn't uh, you should not use SSL anymore. SSL 2030, they have uh, flows, security flows. Uh, go with TLS, TLS one. I think one 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 uh, one, one, one two is good. One two is the latest one, but uh, one one is still also good. Uh, it's also good to use, I think. So it's a back form for a uh, fallback. Sorry. <coughs> So you can configure it, and you can also decide uh, to select which what ciphers you can use. And of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, instructions on the internet how you can secure and what what, what protocol you should u use that has that has no security flaws yet. Yet, but you know yeah. mm. how it is. They have maybe because no code is perfect, but they were not fine about it. Yeah, it should be also. So uh, uh, last year I had a little bit. Bad luck. Uh, I had a, 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 a specific organization, and they just uh, got banned. So I've been this good all bad. the time with start SSL. They bought yeah. up another company without having a check, yeah. and yeah. so they completely the root certificate yeah. get banned, and so it was just that's bad because then you all your users will get yeah. an error. This certificate yeah, is not valid right, anymore. Right. That's, that's, that's of course a problem that, that you always have. Yes, and then we went to let's encrypt and just. It's, it's just fine. fine. It yeah. works great. So it works perfect. Yeah, so but so but like I said, if, if you if your certification authority will be bad or whatever or. Whatever, and the problem is, we did not get as customer any warning. This is very. Yeah, so so we just customer came and said, "Wow, what, what's happening to your site? Did you get hacked or whatever?" And yeah, we, right. we, it took us a couple of days to figure out what was actually going on. Right. So but of course you can be sh get sure and go to the big players. So I don't think they will be. Get uh, well, they ha they have to, they have been a, they are a big player, but it's, still yeah, they yeah they are big because they had three SSLs as well. So I think that's the reason because they were. Yeah. So so but yeah. so do not worry about taking let's encrypt. Yes. It's good. It's very good. It's, it's awesome. So this is an example of my own project. Uh, it's running on Plesk, and I just create, uh, installed the Plesk uh, extension for Let's Encrypt. Uh, just activate in, in within one or two minutes, my website was completely secured. Uh, the certificate was was already installed, and everything ran smoothly. 
And this is what you see if you do it properly. You will get a green block, and that you see verified by that script. And if you click on more information, you will get uh, more information about the uh, about the certificate itself. So you will see, like I said, it's just valid for three months. So on this day, I, sh I should have should uh, renew it. If not, then you will get uh, the screen. Oh, your 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 or the certificate is not valid anymore. Blah blah blah. If you want to proceed, it's it's a security yeah. risk. And also the fingerprint. So it's not that important. But you see, it's just running fine. It's uh, that's a grip authority. And it's just and also always domain, so you, they don't have wildcards yet. So you would ha you have to create for each domain an own certificate. This is the only drawback. But this is this is just click and click, click and go. It's quite easy. Two two cents from me. Sure sure sure. Go on. Uh, when you go to a public conference and you use a public Wi-Fi and you are trying to connect to not secure uh, web page with your credentials, it sends it through HTTP as a claim test. So. You know, <laughs> yes. So it's very important, of course, from the security point of view. Like I said, even if you're using your own things, uh, they should also be secured with a yeah. certificate. If you're an open Wi-Fi, like you said, you don't have a encrypted connection. And all, all there, there are so many tools. There are so many tools that you can yeah. just uh, rip and get the data sure. from from the streams. Yeah. So if you use certificate, <laughs> then you're on the safe side. And of course, there are some other things yeah. to to take into account. And what we have in Joomla is to force HTTPS. So it's again in the server settings in the global configuration. And then we have the option to serve HTTPS now, uh, administrator only, and entire site. So you can just force it if the, if the request is, uh, go through the uh, Joomla, Joomla system. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, so uh, they will they ch check very very early in the process. They will ch check whether the request was done over HTTP or HTTPS, and then redirects. So it's a, oh, it's it's not over HTTPS, but the setting is on. So it will uh, redirect with a three zero zero the uh, three zero one. So permanently redirected. So it's uh, to not lose Google index ranking or whatever. But um, this has to go through the to the Joomla system. If you have files that are loaded directly, there won't be, of course, redirected to HTTPS. Then you, you have to do something server side. Um, I will show also an example in the next slide. But first, Frankie. Um, I found it out that it's a lot of times easier to, to have the entire site on HTTPS than just parts of it. This is what I also do. I try completely. Yeah. Of course, if you have some scripts, that are, there's, there can be some conflicts, you know. But, but but a lot of times it's easier to have it all yeah. just running through. Yeah, but so. I, have, I have some problems with it. Uh, I have a, a validation server running, also completely over HTTPS, and some hosting companies did not allow to do curl requests to my server because they mm -hmm. could not validate my certificate. So I had to create another sub-domain sub without HTTPS so they can uh, take the unencrypted file. So there are some, some uh, obstacles, but it, yeah. it's not that... Uh, usually you should... Try uh, to, to go completely through HTTPS. What I'm doing, but David did uh, said it's not the best idea, is to to close the port 80 completely <laughs> and just open. But um, the better idea would be, of course, to redirect. So on the server side, on the edge uh, via your web server, redirect all the not secured uh, requests to the secured ones. This is right. And use HTTPS. Yeah, that was another point. H yeah. Okay, so, um, but of course, if you want to secure or, or redirect such calls, not, not encrypted calls, uh, of files or images, you, sh you have to go to the server level and then you can set a simple rule uh, in your edge access. This is just an example. You can, there are so many examples. So simple. This is very simple. <laughs> so I can memorize it. No, you can. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You can Google that. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, Thank you just you. need to write. <laughs> So if, if it's not HTTPS, so the the, the, the scheme, the scheme uh, then we direct to HTTPS version, and that's the, just the pr same parameters that were in the request. And this is the the code 301. So it's permanently redirected. But then uh, you shouldn't switch off HTTPS again. That would be stupid <laughs> if you redirect permanently and then switch it off. But you can also check for 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 the URL. You can also check whether they are going coming through the port 443. So there are many possibilities to, to redirect uh, not encrypted uh, calls requests. So this is what, who asked me cache control? 
Yeah, right. So this is a, po a possibility uh, using uh, mod expires. It's a patcher module to set the cache control. Um, so, yeah, make a picture. <laughs> uh, so so you present a pose, please. What do you, what do you mean? Present a pose. <laughs> and like, for instance, uh, yeah, but tweet it, please, okay? <laughs> no, with the other one with the place logo. Yeah, I just uploaded to Pornhub. <laughs> I'm so sexy? Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. There's so rich people, they like everything. So you, you can set the expire. Uh, so, for instance, um, uh, that says to the browser, okay, I can take this type, uh, this CSS files, can be after the first access. Plus, uh, plus one week. So after one week, I have to revalidate it. But for one week, I can keep it in my storage. So this is how you, you set the cache time. It's all done over this director director. So it's quite easy. But you, I don't know whether this is the perfect uh, configuration. But isn't this when you do um, speed testing in Google and they give you scores? One yes. of the things they always go on about, I never knew where to set that, was the cache in the middle part. So this is effectively where it is. Yeah, yeah. Because they always go. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do, you do it over the server, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also server, so server, server level. If we put this in our module, we can tune it to what Google is saying is the right one and get a better score. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and you you will get a suggestion. Maybe I don't know whether the the. They do give a suggestion. Sorry. They do give a suggestion, so it'd be quite useful to use it. And then. Yeah, yeah. But Google PageSpeed will say, "Oh, this is not very good. The setting is not that good." Or you will get. A, you should set it on one month or two months or yeah. one year. So it's quite good if you set it and then recheck, re and then you will see whether you can improve on it. So I'm not sure whether this setting is really perfect. I don't think you should catch the HTML because we get the same thing over here. Yeah, you can, you can also do the yeah, HTML cache. Right. You can add the fonts. And the fonts. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, like Frankie, Frank, I forgot the fonts again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I had, I had not, no, no space anymore. Hey, don't worry, it took me also a long time until uh, I yeah, realized yeah. that this would if be a good idea. If you're using fonts, of course. Mm -hmm. Alex, So this is why you're using yeah the logo, the jQuery from Maxidian. Yes. I know what you mean, but um, the fonts, I don't know whether they're so brightly used that, that somebody who is visiting you have it's has already the same font. Yeah. So most probably you have it already. Yeah, but try to avoid, uh, I, my, I personally would, would go would, uh, go like forever it's like this. Special, so if you use Google fonts, um, this is a valid argument. That users may have already loaded it and that's faster. Absolutely. If you're using icon fonts, and especially custom tailored icon fonts, you just yeah, can't forget that. Yeah, so. Font also for the Yeah, like this, like this, that, that's okay. Like for example, for yeah. like, uh, uh, if, if you're using icon move, where you can just say, um, I want icon fonts, but I just need 20 fonts, uh, 20 uh, characters, and not uh, 250, Did you yeah. And the big advantage, like you said with CDN, is uh, if somebody is calling my, my service in Germany, but somebody from Tokyo will, will load my website, of course, the jQuery will be loaded from the, from Japan. Yeah, or right. somewhere. Uh, mostly, it's already loaded, because some other site uses the same CDN. So it's already cast on your website. Right, right, right. right. It's a good idea to use even the local CDN on your server, with some domain, because yes. you can turn off the headers, and the cookies uh, passed by every images or CSS. You can analyze the... By the way, you can do this with JC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, it's enough. Yeah. So, but another possibility also to to say the max age would be this one. Yeah. So, to if you want to ma manipulate the headers, header information, there's also a module for it. And here I got icon, but not font. 
<laughs> as you see, this is quite old, outdated, yeah, yeah, yeah. because SVF, I, I don't think uh, SWF uh, is using it anymore, but you can also set directly in the header, if, the, if the, this file is called and you set in the header the cache control, and you can define a max age and the public or private, oh. so, so this means private is uh, just uh, cached by the one who, who loaded this, this image or this, this file, and public is uh, in, the, in, the local st in the global storage. So this is what you can also set, and oh, I'm not sure whether they're so perfectly, but you, but you should check whether the settings are okay. But as I said, you can also PHP files, HTML, XML, HTML files, and you can also set to must be validated, so it must must be loaded. So and don't rely on the cache that when it's cached. So that's pretty, I think. Do we have something more? Ah, okay, some some small helper tools we have mentioned them already. So PageSpeed Insights. But don't only rely on such tools, so they help you to find the bottlenecks and to get your, give you a start, but you have to look further and look deeper in it, of course. And we have, of course, some tools to, to check your first byte, uh, to check you will see a waterfall, how long, which file took, took longer, or you can uh, change the, 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 the location from where you are loading with web page tests. So you can load uh, your website from Dallas or from Frankfurt, from Tokyo, and see, okay, how my website is reacting. And also Spring Dome JT metrics. So there are some common tools, but there are many more you suggest have to Google and you will find. So questions? Oh, so, uh, I was wondering uh, if you come across like an e tag implementation for Jimbo. I don't I tried it also but I failed somehow. Yeah, so that's the reason why they are not in my slides here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I never like uh, we 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have a solution for Joomla specifically, but uh, I tried in, in my HX to uh, play around a little bit with it, but I, I deactivated. I had some problems uh, with the revalidation and I deactivated, but I would have to investigate more time on that. Uh, so, but maybe somebody can just the page cache model from Joomla. <laughs> The plugin, the plugin you mean? Yeah, the plugin. Yeah, the plugin. Uh, yeah, it's worked on with browser cache. Yeah. That's finally. That's okay. But that's probably broken. Okay. By design. Yeah, by design broken. So you see, we don't have a really yeah. white light solution yet. Everything about the ACI, CTAC, 860s that was mentioned, all of these are into a vintage module from the Colosseum software, which is presenting right next to you. Um, I wanted to ask one thing. I don't know how it can be done. I see everywhere load static sources from a cookie domain. If somebody can explain how yeah, but it can be done, I don't, I don't, I don't think that we, we can provide cookie domains with Joomla. Huh? So, what you do is you basically store your, so you have some domain like assets or uh, Joomla top. You load all your JavaScript images. How you do it to the design problem? You upload it, move it, but then. Uh, you have a domain, so right now the cookies that appear are because they must have cookies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. If you have a domain, if you have a subdomain, it's like a plain, uh, so it just has images, then there's no cookies because there's nobody reading any cookies. Uh, yeah, 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 because you know, but if you are logged into backend or whatever, so you, you need yeah. cookies. So it's, for it's like a plain asset. <laughs> Like play, yeah, like there, there, there's, actually, there's actually a way around, but you have to test it, but it's a bit tricky. If you <laughs> surf, yeah, like with everything, the answer is it depends. <laughs> and you can set uh, cookies uh, only to, 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 to your main domain, but make sure that all uh, the files are loaded are from subdomains. Then you can just reduce this, and then you will not have to store a cookie for for this specific uh, uh, for, for for images mm -hmm. stuff like this. But I think, as far as I remember, you have to put also some extra code into your hard access because Google does not give a fuck about what you say yes. there. Yes. Yeah, but if you put this into it, then it suddenly works. Then you can eat the cookie. But to find out, yeah, enjoy your cooking. That's the way cookie from. That's great, no? Oh, <laughs> we, we end with cooking. But oh, it's more easier. You can simply use the HTTP2. Uh -huh. And there the are cookies that only be sent once. Unfortunately, yeah, right. I'm with your opponent. 
and with, and with C Madden, so it doesn't have an official version for it to do yet. Yeah, so you, you have to switch to Plesk easily. Yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, all problems will be gone. We can provide you the support for it. <laughs> I will talk to you later. Okay. So, um, caching, uh, expiry caching, uh, can you people handle changes if it's a and it gets cached, and your changes. So the browser keeps on uh, going on its own. Yes, the easiest yes. way is to add a timestamp, and if you change the timestamp, <laughs> it has it, it's for the browser. It's a new file, and it will recache it. That's the easiest way. What you always can do yeah. with all the files. Well, what in case you know, this is just simple name, like the JPEG file, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And it stays there, right? I now know what you mean. <laughs> so then you can use like a cache controller and so say it must revalidate after one month. So I think it's also possible through <laughs> server settings. But the easiest way, if you write a uh, plugin or whatever, a uh, logic. Just to reset the timestamp each month or whatever, and just add it to the URL to the question mark and then the timestamp, and then it will be revalidated from the browser from everywhere. So it's a new file for the browser. Yeah. That's the easiest way. What I always do if I need to revalidate something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question? No. Out. Uh, David?